AWS Lambda versus microservices, what's the difference? Welcome everybody, my name is Dale Richards, CEO of App Creative. We're an app development company on the Silicon Slopes of Utah, and we love building software that changes the world. If you want to create apps, scale your technology, transform your business, and disrupt the market, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. So what is the difference between AWS Lambda and microservices? These are both popular approaches for building scalable and efficient applications in the cloud. So there are some similarities, but they have distinct differences that can make them better suited for different use cases. So what we're going to do in this video is compare AWS Lambda and microservices to help you choose the best approach for your application. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service offered by Amazon Web Services, or AWS. And this service allows you to run your code without provisioning or managing servers. You only pay for the compute time that you consume, making it a cost-effective solution for running applications with unpredictable or infrequent usage patterns. That basically means that people are hitting your application, uh, they're using it, and so they're calling your quote-unquote server, but there actually isn't a server there. What happens is that the Lambda function is event-driven, meaning that it's triggered by a specific events, such as a change to data in the database or messages in a queue. So this event happens, it hits the Lambda, the Lambda turns on, it executes, and then it shuts itself back down. If you want more information about how the AWS Lambda works, you can watch this video. Microservices, on the other hand, are a software architecture pattern, not a service. And in this pattern, the application is broken down into a collection of small independent services that communicate with each other via APIs. Each microservice is responsible for a specific task and can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently from the others. And this allows for greater agility and flexibility in developing and also in deploying complex applications. Our AWS Lambda is the same as microservices. Let, let's say you have two separate pieces of business logic. One of them is updating your profile in an application and the other is sending a message to another user. So in a straight up microservice architecture, that does not use AWS Lambdas. Each of these functions is accomplished by a separate service. So you have a user authentication service over here uh, and you, you have a user messaging service over here. And each of those services runs on a server in a data center somewhere all the time. Someone needs to monitor and maintain those servers to make sure that they're always working. Otherwise, if they crash, users won't be able to log in or send messages. And they will think that your app is broken. And it is. Well, if you could put each of those functions into an AWS Lambda, now you have a Lambda with your logic for logging in and another Lambda with your logic for sending a message. AWS, as the cloud provider, does not have servers running those services all the time. What happens is that when your user authenticates or sends a message, it triggers an event on AWS's hardware that says, spin up this authentication service because someone needs to use it. The same thing happens with the messaging service, right? Spin up this messaging service because someone wants to use it. Once the users are done with these functions, then they terminate. AWS Lambda and microservices are not opposites. The opposite of AWS Lambda would be server-based architecture, and the opposite of microservices would be monolithic architecture. If you want more information about microservices versus monolithic architecture, you can watch this video. Can you use AWS Lambda in a microservice architecture? Yes. Lambda functions are wonderful for microservice architecture. You can put each microservice into its own Lambda. That's called a single purpose function. You can develop, deploy, and scale each microservice separately from the others. And as for scaling, you don't even really have to worry about that since AWS scales it automatically for you. Another benefit of using AWS Lambdas with a microservice architecture is that Lambdas are easily used in layers, making shared reusable code easily available to multiple functions. Are there other ways to use AWS Lambdas? Yes, absolutely. Single purpose functions are not the only ways to use Lambdas. You can have a Lambda that has a whole Docker container in it. In fact, according to the Datadog 2022 State of Serverless report, one in five Lambda customers packages and de deploys functions as container images. Let's show you this beautifully nerdy Venn diagram. Basically, Lambda functions can run microservices and containers, but not all Lambda functions have microservices. Some do, some don't. The same thing could be said for containers. You can have a Lambda run a container hosting a microservice. So the very notion that AWS Lambda equals microservices is something of a misnomer. They're not mutually exclusive. One is a compute service and another is an architectural pattern. They can be used together. 
Ultimately, the choice between AWS Lambda and microservices depends upon your specific needs and use case. If you want to learn more about AWS Lambda, watch this video on the AWS Lambda layers, or if you want an answer to the burning question, can AWS Lambda run Docker containers? Watch this video.